Amen. This morning can hear the clear blue light. It's it's amazing. Thank you, um, communication team. As I was looking at that, it helps us all to see it's not though we're AME. God is not a God of Africans or Europeans or those of Asian descent. God is a God of us all. Amen. Do you think God was limited Amen. to just Africa? Do you think God was limited to just Europe? Do you think God was just limited uh, to, to Japan or uh, uh, Australia? God is the God of the universe. He's the God of everything ever created. Amen. It's a blessing Amen. this morning to look and to Amen. see. Amen. Amen. Worshiping God. That was beautiful. Thank you, communication team. I, I, as I was looking, I was just in my mind reflecting at how good God is because God is greater than even we can imagine. You know, we have some limited view of God. Sometimes we put God in a box and in a box of the friends we have or the place we work or the place we go or even our family infrastru infrastructure and not realize that God is so much greater than we can imagine and think. And this sometimes is why we're limited in what God can do for us, because when we look at, and look at God and say, oh, well, God, uh, you, you can do things in, 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 in the box of my finite mind. You can do things within what I can imagine. You can do things the way I think they can be fixed. Not realizing God has the entire universe at his disposal. I don't know if anybody's ever been blessed by someone you've never met, you never knew. But God will use folks sometime to come by and give you a word. And you say, God, how did you do that? How did you orchestrate that moment? And God says, I'm God. I'm sovereign. I'm righteous. Amen. 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 There's, there's nothing too hard for God. I'm, I'm ready to preach. Now. I'm going to step back. I'm, I'm getting happy. Let me step back. Amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm thankful, even though, and I know many of you are going through different battles, but my family has is, is, is been hit with a number of them, uh, it seems week after week. And I'm thankful because I know that when storms come, and I want y'all to understand this, when storms come, be clear, God is moving. Amen. No storm mm -hmm. has ever gone out on the ocean. That That's God right. is not the creator and orchestrator. See, God does things sometimes to strengthen our faith. God does things sometimes to cause us to call on him. If you remember a few weeks ago, help me, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. We read a book by Dr. Howard Thurman talking about how our pains and our issues helped to usher us to the presence of God, helped us to become uh, uh, better at, at how we pray and communicate to God. Sometimes our issue is what God is orchestrating to bring us closer to him. I'm gonna let that alone. Amen. Oh, God is calling you closer. Amen. You. Don't look at the situation. The situation Amen. was orchestrated. The situation was actually orchestrated. The situation was orchestrated to strengthen your faith. I'm so glad this morning again to stand before you as the pastor of Bethel AME Carlisle. It's a blessing to be your pastor. And I thank God for my family. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for just being able one more time, one more Sunday in this Lenten season to be able to come before God's people and share a word. This morning, if you have your Bible or you have your uh, your, your, your technology um, device, uh, you can go with me over into the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter three, the book of Acts chapter three. And as you're journeying, there is good to look out and see so many of you. Brother Cobb, it's good to see you, sir. It's good to see you. You can just wave at everybody. It's good to see you, Brother Cobb. I know that as this thing, this thing called life, it seemed to be rocking that boat to and fro, but you holding on. Oh, you about making me ready to shout. Just looking at you, Brother Cobb. Just looking at you. I saw you smile a little while ago. Just made me ready to run through here. It's good to see you, sir. It's good to see you. Good to see the Green family again. Uh, where's that young man at? I, I know y'all had the camera off. I want to see that young man again. He can wave uh, if he's available. Uh, mine are down sleeping. Uh, that's why we had the camera off. So please pardon us. Uh, then we also see Brother Travis back. It's great to see you. Uh, it's great to see you, my brother. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts 
chapter three, the book of Acts chapter three. And for those who are reading along intently, oh, all right, hey, hey, hey. Uh, the book of Acts chapter three, starting at verse one, and I'll be using the King James rendering for those who are reading along intently. Amen. You'll find these words. Now, Peter and John went up together in the temple, into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the gate. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask in alms, and Peter fastening his eyes on upon him and John said look on us and he gave heed unto mm -hmm. him expecting to receive something of them then Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk the word of God mm -hmm. thus far Amen. 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 God, take us all out of self. Allow us all to decrease as you shall increase in us. And Lord, we'll evermore be thankful, grateful unto you. But Lord, I'm asking in this hour that you empty me. Empty me, Lord, of everything related to Gerald Wendell Crummy. And Lord, fill me with nothing but your spirit. I want to be used as a vessel, Lord, to bring mm -hmm. hope and strength, to bring a message which may trigger salvation. Lord, I ask these prayers and petitions, not my will, but your will. In your son amen. Jesus' name, amen. 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 For the time allotted to us, want to use as a subject briefly all I got all I got church I want you to know that we live in a peculiar time we live in a time they many uh, that many call excuse me <clears throat> the popcorn generation the generation of now the generation uh, uh, of, of, of individualism, the individualism of, of, of the society, uh, I'll say, has become uh, the, 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 the way of marketing, the way of, 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 of how we engage one another. We want to know what do they want and how can I get them to pay attention to me? We're trying to spark people's interest because what do you want? We're not looking for what God wants. We're not looking for what God is intending. We're not looking for purpose. We're looking at what we want. In the bowels of this society, something was birthed some decades ago called the prosperity gospel. A gospel into which we, we as people uh, seem to leave mainline traditional churches to go in droves to try and figure out how we could in fact turn the gospel almost into something akin to an ATM. We, we got to the point where many were going to churches looking, how can I get something from God? How can I gain something from this thing? Church, I'm not looking to come and change on the inside. I, I'm not looking to come and 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 be 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 challenged or or to be convicted. I'm coming simply to try to find what can I take. I don't know if y'all hear me this morning. I don't know if you remember this sense of old oh, who used to say things like if I could but help somebody along life's journey. 
Yes. Running. Yes. Won't be in vain. I don't remember if anybody on the line ever heard grandmama, mama say, if I could but just help somebody. I don't know. I don't have a lot. I'm not a rich or wealthy man or woman, but if I, mm, I want to preach, Brother Holler. If I can just help somebody, it may be through a song. It may mm -hmm. be through a kind word. It may just be through telling somebody God is able. I don't care what you're going through, but mm -hmm. God is a God who sits high, who looks low. He's concerned with what you're going through. It may just be mm -hmm. that. We've forgotten. So, 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 so many have forgotten that, that, that God is concerned with not only just our prosperity, he's concerned with our human decency, how we're treated one oh, another. Y'all heard what we read for the call, let us. He said, I love thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, but the second greatest commandment is like unto it, love thy neighbor mm -hmm. thyself. These two, but you know, we follow just those two things, just those two things. We're able to circumvent stealing. We're able to circumvent adultery. We're able to circumvent uh, honor our parents. We're able to circumvent lying. We're able to circumvent so many things when we take notice of how we treat our brothers and our sisters. But let's go further. I believe that many in our day and time in our context were trapped in this prosperity gospel because for one, we misunderstood the Abrahamic covenant, which to many meant material entitlement. If you read on there, you, 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 you find that so many thought that the blessing of Abraham won. We thought, oh, because Abraham was blessed and blessed abundantly that God must mean that I must be blessed with all these big, great things. In other words, we start to make God again like an ATM. I, I believe because of what I can get. I believe because of what God can provide for me. I, I believe only when you show me something. I don't know if anybody in here ever seen or heard somebody that, well, I believe if he show me this, if he do this, not understanding that God is beyond our understanding of illness and our understanding of sickness, our understanding of, of, of heartbreak. Sometimes God used those very things as tools to bring us closer. As God's covenant has been established, prosperity's provision is not the norm. It's not the, the, the absolute. We need to realize that prosperity is just an outcome. It's a potential. It's not something that we have to have. It is something that if God chooses, he can bless us. Galatians 3 and 14, he says, thy covenant, the blessing of Abraham might come, might come upon the Gentiles in Christ. He said, it might come. We got to get outside of thinking that because we are a part of this faith, key word, this faith, not a part of some group or some fraternity or some organization in which we are benefactors of things, but this faith being a part of this faith walk. Sometimes it's going to get hard. Sometimes you're going to have to battle with our own understanding. This faith walk, we are children of this faith walk. We are part of this faith walk. That's what we were blessed with. We were born into this thing as children of the faith. Don't misunderstand that prosperity, things and material. Don't misunderstand that. When you come to church looking for the pastor of his officers or his members to give you. When I walk in, I'm looking at who can serve me, who can give me. 
How can I connive or cheat? Versus saying, God, thank you. The burdens of my heart have been lifted. Number two, when we look at this thing, all I got, Jesus atoning or atonement extended to sins of our material property. I want you to understand that Jesus' atoning extended over our sin. But our issue is oftentimes we allow the material things, if you remember the prayers of Jabez, don't, don't just let me get these things. But oftentimes when I get them, it's the things and the wants and the desires of the things that lead me into sin. Oftentimes what happens to many is we forget God. When God blesses us, when God allows us to gain material things, and don't get me wrong, God blesses us. He blesses us abundantly, but he blesses us with what we need. The Bible says we, he won't put more on us than we can uh, 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 handle. But see, what we'll do, we'll try to put everything on our back and then call for God when it gets so burdensome and heavy. Not understanding that sometimes if we relieve ourselves, wait a minute, God, I don't need all this. Now, it, this this is not necessary, but we forget that the joy that I have comes from Him, not the joy of these things. If, my, if, if I'm a, if I'm attached to those things, I miss that atoning spirit, that atonement that Jesus brings about, that that that, that contrite spirit, that repentative heart, that Jesus helps us to engage. Because we realize it's not the material things, but it's in fact the blessing of his atoning grace. It says his grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not a brink truck, not, not, not a job, not, 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 not a car, not a house, not, 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 not a whole big bank account, but his grace and his mercy. And I'm about done now. Shall follow me all the days of my life. That is, in fact, the blessing when we realize who he is. He compensates us through his sacrifice. He compensates us through his love. He compensates us through him becoming poor. He says he became poor. I think if you read somewhere that he became poor. He left the throne. He left heaven. Stepped out. Came down. In and among us to allow us that time. He said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that through him he was rich, yet for your sake, he became poor, that through his poverty, we might become rich and not rich in material, but rich in faith. I want you to know that day, I wasn't there, Brother Carl, when Peter was approached by this man. I wasn't in the room when they stopped by the church that day. I want you to know there can be any day when you come to God's house, maybe challenged with a question or something that may make you think. But on that day, when those men came in for worship, somebody, somebody who said they'd been there many times, you know, everybody at the church ain't came for the right reason. Some folk been at the church a long time and have yet to receive the grace, have yet to receive that mercy because they have not opened their heart. But on that day, this man, I'm sure being there many times, seeing many come in, he saw something in them. And then and, and, and as he's watching, he asked the question, hey, 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 man, I, can I get something? Is there something you mean? And I don't know if some of y'all walking around God to make you look good. 
Sometimes you may be broke, battered, and disgusted. Sometimes you may not have a thing, but God will make you look real good. I don't know if anybody who can say amen to that. God will make you look better than your circumstance. These men, he saw something, amen. Gained something from you. God will have folk looking at you like you are a billionaire because of how God has changed and directed your life. But these men, knowing God, and I'm understanding God's ways. I believe that on some level, at uh, this time that God uh, had blessed us with Jesus's resurrection, they, 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 they understood now the scripture when they, 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 they were there with that lad and realized that when you give unto God, when you sacrifice unto God, God's ways are not our ways. God's ways are not our ways. They began to understand, wait a minute, gold and silver have I not known. Yeah. I don't have uh, the wealth of this world. I, I'm not looking at what's in my bank account, but what I have, y'all don't hear me this morning. I offer to you freely. Who knows that the love I have, the peace I have is worth more than silver and gold. My brother, don't have those things. This is all I got. All I got is to recognize you. To see church for some folks, they haven't been recognized. They have not been engaged on the humanistic level. Some folk have been batted and put down to believe they're nothing, to believe they have nothing. But the blessing is when we're able when we're able to recognize someone and give them from our heart. See, for so many of us, we're moving so fast through life. We're moving so fast, even in the church. We look to pacify someone. We look to give what can be taken so quickly. But I want y'all to understand something. I'm going to slow down and just give you this one nugget. Days before, before Jesus had been beaten, and he'd been taken up on that cross. His disciples were asking a question, Jesus, how can we do what you do? We, 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 we see this man who, who was ill, and we see this man who has been bedridden, and we see this man who's been uh, playing with these demonic forces, and we've not been able to get them to relieve him. And Jesus said unto them, some of these things only come out through prayer and through fasting. But I'm trying to tell you, church, see, these men had shifted from a materialistic kind of gospel to understanding that when they were presented with a man, and I want y'all, I'm helping you, I'm ICG and just a tag. When they got to this man, they were ready now. Oh, they weren't looking for the things of this world, but they were ready now because somebody had been praying. Somebody had been fasting. I don't have no money. I want y'all, I don't have a whole bunch of money and things. But what I have some days when it's hard, I'm on my knees. Some days when I feel like giving up, I'm praying, I'm fasting. I'm looking to God saying, God, give me the strength. I don't know what you're going to do in my life. I don't know who you're going to put me before, but I want to be ready. I want to be ready when you call my name. These men, when they were before this gentleman, he had been them many Sundays, many preaching at him, many teaching at him, many trying to tell him about God. But it's when we come, we come filled with the Holy Ghost, come filled with God's love and peace that we're able to give someone that little something extra that only heaven can give. Church, this is all I got. And all I got is everything. When we come before God ready, healing can happen. Deliverance can happen. Joy can take root when we come before God. And we come before God. We come before God. Ready to be used, Peter and John, but ready now. You'd ask them, 
over in mean, Matthew or you caught them over in John or you maybe stumbled upon them in Luke. They weren't ready yet. They were still looking at things from a materialistic point of view. But now after understanding who he was, church, they were ready now. It's not about this world's possessions. This world's gonna pass away. But I have something, something on the inside I can give. And it's hard sometimes, church, when you're faced with doubt and you're faced with loss. These men had just lost their Jesus. They had just lost their leader. But it was something about that resurrection. There was something about him showing himself. Their faith was strengthened. And they began to do the things of God and of Jesus. He said, greater works shall you do. Greater works. And I'm here to tell you, church, many are coming to our churches Sunday after Sunday and not receiving what they really came for. They're coming because of what this world has told them the church will give. And I'm here to tell you, church, it's time for us to truly give it all we got. It's time for us to take off the fine suits and the fine uh, titles and say, God, how can you use me? I'm preparing myself. I want to be used by you. This is all I got is me. This is all I got. It's not about the things. It's about the choice, the decision to say, God, use me, use me, use me, use me. I'm here, I'm available. The door of the church is open. I'm here to tell you this morning, he's here. He wants you to give your heart and your mind to be used, not to come looking for how you can steal, connive, and manipulate. He's coming to say, are you willing to give up yourself, because I want to use you. I want to be useful in God's sight. I want to be used by God. As the songwriter says, however you can use me in this season, Lord, use me. You can use me. Who wants to be utilized by God? It may be that husband or wife who's struggling trying to understand how can I negotiate and navigate uh, a, a, a turbulent relationship or marriage. Or it might be that, that sister or brother who's trying to put their arms around the family when no one seems to care or understand. Mm. It may be that friend backstab time and time and time and time again but God has put you in that crowd and you're the only one who's able to be that light it may be you're the one you're the one who, 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 who who's in that class or who's in that work environment who is the light if you weren't there nothing would move forward you see you gotta understand sometimes God puts us in a place. If you don't understand it then, we don't understand it during the moment, but God puts us somewhere because all that praying you've done, all that fasting you've done, all that sacrificing you've done, all that preparing you've done, God is saying right now, it was for this hour, I was going to use you. You may not have seen it then, but it was this hour, because you were a willing participant. This is what's powerful about giving yourself to Christ. It's about the willingness. Jesus didn't have to do it. Oh, I want to preach it. He didn't have to do it, but he stepped out of heaven's way. Many could have said, I'll do anything, God. I, I, I'll help him out. I'll, I'll, I'll try, but he took off those heavenly garments. He stepped off of that throne on the right side. He, he stepped down into the muck and mouth of my life. He said, I'll go. Send me. I'll go. I'll give it all. I'll be stripped of all my humanity and humility. I'll be stripped of all my royalness. I'll be stripped to nothing. I'll give even to the point of death, 
Church, he was giving himself for you. This morning, the doors of the church are open. He came. He did this. We were lame. We were the ones unable to spiritually walk, spiritually talk, spiritually take up and carry on. But Jesus, having given it all, he made it possible for us to be healed. This morning, the door is open for you. This morning, he came by here for you. He sacrificed, he prayed, he gave up himself for you. The door is open. If this morning you've heard the words, you've heard the words, not my words, God's words. You've heard the words. There's a couple ways this morning. You don't have to have the perfect words to say. But this morning, if you want to offer to you an opportunity to give your life to him, because he gave everything for you. He gave you all he had. All he had, he gave to you. This morning, if you've not given your life to Christ, there's a few ways this morning you can connect with us. If you see the screen, you can see them. But if you can, I'm going to give you two ways. You can either text us at 864 201 3920. Again, 864 201 3920. Or you can email us at Bethel AME Carlisle. Again, Bethel AME Carlisle at gmail.com. You can text or email us simply the words, I found faith. I found faith. And this morning, what that means is now you understand that it was Jesus who came by this morning to see you. You may have been lame mentally, maybe spiritually. You may be looking at your finances. You may be looking at your life and say, God, how can I? I've been coming for a long time. I've been trying and striving for a long time. And Nothing seems to work. He's here. This morning, if you've not given yourself, opened your heart, your mind to him, he's available. Right now, he's telling you, silver and gold, have I none. But such as I have, I give unto you. Life everlasting, life abundant. He has the world in his hands. He's not looking to give you the thing this world can take away. He's looking to give you the thing that this world cannot touch. That joy, that peace, that love that only he can give. He's here and his hands are wide open. If that is you this morning, he's here for you. You can give your life again. Simply texting the words or calling the number or even texting this Zoom. I found faith and we'll know what you're talking about. Amen. Now, for those who may be joining the household of faith this morning, thank God for you. Thank God that you've made the decision because he's done it all for you. Even before you knew, he said, even before you were a twinkle or thought in your mother's eyes, I knew you before the womb. I knew you. He already knew what you were going to go through. He already knew what you were going to face. He knew what this man was going to deal with. And he orchestrated those men to come to church on that Sunday. I'm so glad, I'm so glad this morning that he, he orchestrates things. Even when we least expect it, even when we think, God, I, I don't know whether it's ever going to happen for me. God will put people right in your path. He'll put people right in your path. All you're looking, all you're watching, he's here. Now, we also want to offer to you church membership. This morning, there's an opportunity to join this church. And I want you to understand the, 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 the formula for getting God's presence. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be. See, it takes us getting together and loving one another, supporting one another, being engaged with one another in his name. See, we can't come together in foolishness. I want y'all to understand. See, you, we can come together for a lot of things, but if we come together in his name, we can help 
but get his presence. Who wants his presence this morning? Who wants God's presence this morning? Do you realize that God is in the room? Hmm. I don't know what sickness. I don't know what disease. I don't know what broken family or marriage can do anything when God is in your midst. When God is there, oh, he'll make the rough way smooth. Oh, he knows how to put his arms around me. He knows. Oh, sometime when it get hard, church, I, I look back to God. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Then he gives me that something. Give me that running in my feet. Brother Jones, there ain't nobody behind me. Makes me cry sometimes. Ain't nobody bothering me. Oh. This morning. This is what growing in a church family. You want his presence. You want his presence this morning. This morning, if you want more of his presence in your life, we offer to you an opportunity to join the church. See, joining the church means you want more of his presence. And this morning, if you're not a part of a church family, we offer to you and all you need to do, text, email, I found family. That's what this is about. You see the number on the screen, the email on the screen? This week, I was going through something. And do you know I was able to text one of my brothers in this ministry to be encouraged? See, what you got to understand is sometimes you're going to be going through something, and even though someone else may be going through a similar issue, just hearing a word of encouragement or hearing, I got you, brother. I'm praying for you. Be encouraged. I, I love you. So you don't understand. All of us are dealing with something. Do you hear with me? I, all of us are dealing with something on some level. You may look on the exterior and think, my man, he got it together. She has it together. Oh, man, she's on the way. And don't realize underneath the whole world is crumbling. Yes. God to make you look good on the outside. You was a good God. That meant much more. I wish I was them. And don't realize the burdens of my heart, the burdens that I'm dealing with day in and day out. This is why, this is why it's good to be a part of a church. Somebody, as the song writer, somebody prayed for me. Yes. Had me on their minds. Took the time. And pray, pray for me. me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm yeah. so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they took the time to pray for me. That's, oh, I'm, I ain't going to preach again. That's what being a part of a church family means. That you have somebody sometime when the late nights get long. Somebody's there in their prayer room praying. Somebody's fasting. Somebody's saying, God, I, I don't know how to solve their problem. But God, I'm going to sit right here until you move, until you make things right. And you don't understand. Sometimes God will step right in. Somebody says, their own time, God. When that little extra joy comes, when that good news breaks, and you think, well, maybe it was because I tithe or because I did this, but you don't know somebody somewhere connected to you, was laboring all night saying, God, until you move, I'm not going to get off my knees. Preach. This morning, this morning, it's about being a part of a church family. I don't know why it's pushing me like that right now. Preach. Don't wait. A church, a church family. This is what it used to be about. We didn't get together because we had stuff. When they had Brush Harbor Church, they didn't have nothing. They didn't have no big building like we got. They didn't have no land like we had. All they had was a few faithful folks. Couldn't get no job in the office and they couldn't go out there and get no loan. But when they got together, they had love. You bring the old, I bring the peas. You, you, you bring the chicken. I don't have no love. But if we come together, God will make it all right. They came together faithfully, Bethel. They messed around and somebody saved a penny. Somebody saved a quarter and they messed around. 
and got 131 pumping, and now we sitting here. Oh my God. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Preach, Pastor, preach. We're sitting here trying to figure out how we're going to do things when God has blessed us. All we got to do is come together. All we got to do is come together. All we got to do is come together. We come together. That's, that's, that's what God is waiting on. He's waiting on a few to come together. You see, every time he moved in the scripture, he got two or three together. It was two. It's Peter and John. They messed around and came together in the spirit. And all they had to do was speak a word. This man who had been lame all these, he just speak a word. Some of us, all we need to do, if we got together, there's things that would move in our midst. There were things that would be fixed in our church. People's families would be blessed. We come together in his name. We'd be able to speak from the altar. God move. I know it's, I know it's bad. I know it seems like it's going to turn upside down, but move what God would do. God won't leave us void. God won't walk on. God will say, you better believe. Try me. Amen. Try me. Amen. I'm going to let it alone. I'm going to let it alone. Now. Thank you, Lord. I look at my own family church. I, ooh, thank you, Lord. Somebody's been praying. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's been praying. Hmm. I wasn't going to share it, but. My father fell down twice this week. Fell down past twice this week. And I thought I was about to lose him. But somebody must have been praying, church. When I got the end report, it was just he was dehydrated. It's needed a little bit of that living water. Y'all don't hear me this morning. Amen. Him. Amen. Somebody was praying for me. Traveling on this road to and from somebody was praying. Thank you, Lord. It's something special when you got a brother or sister in Christ. Don't take this light. Don't take this moment lightly. Mm -mm. Going in the church ain't something you just all oh, Maybe I'll do it next Sunday. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll join when I, I, I got this together. You would understand those old saints didn't have two pennies to rub together. But when they got together, God started moving. Don't y'all think we're not benefactors? of all the blessings that these folk were praying for, these all died. Mm, not having received the promises, but seeing them from afar. I want to know when we're going to start taking, taking, having that same kind of faith, having that same kind of mind. Say, I'm not looking for me. I'm not looking for all the blessings for me. But I know I got a child coming through here. Amen. I know I got some grandchild going to be at some point at the altar at Bethel, some, at some point they're going to be looking and searching for a God. I want to make sure they have a place to pray. They have a place to lift the joy for no. Ah, mm. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's why this morning, I'm going to let it go. This is why joining the church is important. This morning, I, I thank you, Lord. He pushed me there. I don't know. This morning, if you've not joined the church, see, this is what being a part of it means. It might not be for you. It may be for that child on your block or that way with husband or wife. It may be for them that God this morning brought you here. But if you are not a part of the church, we offer to you an opportunity this morning to join. Same number, same email address. Just simply the words, found family.